Hey everybody, it's Mike Young with, it's me, you can't see me. Mike Young with Mike Young Real Estate. This is Denise. Your mask is coming out. I have to turn it because it's too big. Oh, okay. It's not adjustable. We are in the, okay, we are in Ecuador, in Quito. We're traveling, so I finally have some time to make a video. You can see we're over here in the, uh, the airport. And I wanna do a quick video on sea level rise and the effect on real estate because we are in Florida a lot. Um, you know, I'm in North Carolina too, and uh, that's where I do most of my real estate business, actually the, 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 uh, the retail stuff, buying and selling. But I have properties in other places, and North Carolina coast is gonna be very, very much affected by the sea level rise. The question is, do you guys believe that's gonna happen? And if so, what's the effect gonna be on real estate? Because we've been talking about different properties, especially in Florida, which is gonna be, Florida's gonna be the, the U.S. state most impacted by sea level rise because of the coast and the low-lying lands. It's so low. It's just kind of like North Carolina on the Outer Banks. It's a very, very similar situation except the entire border of the state pretty much is like that where North Carolina is just the eastern border. But my thoughts are I think that the sea level is going to rise. I think that people in Florida specifically since it's going to be most effective, realtor associations and groups have already been talking about what's going to happen when insurers will no longer insure homes either regular insurance and or flood insurance because you won't be able to get mortgages right denise is in the mortgage industry you won't be able to get mortgages when that happens so what's going to happen with that that could possibly unless you're a cash buyer would either only cash buyers could buy and or the demand and the value would go down to zero and when's that going to happen what kind of time frame is that going to happen how high is the sea going to get because Denise and I have also been playing around with this tool from NOAA, NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, where you can use a sliding scale and you can see how the land disappears when you go up between zero and 10 feet sea level rise. It's only 10 feet. Some people said 10 meters might happen, right? Which is like 30 feet, right? <laughs> but what do you think, Denise? What do you think is going to happen? What, what kind of time frame? What's going to happen to the value of real estate? Are people going to flock into the inland areas? What's going to happen? are already rising because you can see how much the ice caps are melting that's measurable they melt more every year so there's no denying that sea level rise is happening the question is how much will we let the ice caps melt before legislation is passed it's kind of tough to to regulate the entire planet but how, how much will we let melt <laughs> to we reach that ultimate rising point I'm not sure if 10 feet is the maximum if all the ice is gone. Yeah. But it, yeah, it's definitely happening, and I don't, I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. Okay, and some people have already talked about it. I've seen people who have lived on the coastal areas of North Carolina and Florida for many years have said that, look, it's never been this hot. This has never happened. That's never been underwater. We've never had this many that's happen, everything else, and it's usually affected. Uh, basically the amount of land that's above water. The, the waters are rising. I think everybody's seeing that. Yeah, the only said, question is how fast, right? They said their flood zone maps have changed. When they first bought their properties, they didn't need flood insurance, but now they do. That means the map has changed. And these are people in coastal areas, so the floods take into consideration not only heavy, heavy rainstorms and hurricanes, which Florida and North Carolina are subject to, but also just the rising sea levels. Because when the rise, sea levels rise, we tr use that tool, the land just disappears. You know, at a 10 level, like if you look at Florida, at a 10 foot sea level rise, almost all the land, most all the land that is outside the interstates, meaning east of 95, south of Alligator Alley, and west of 75 will disappear. The only thing that will be left is the stuff in the side of the state, which is kind of crazy, you know? So like we own a property that's just north of 75 on Alligator Alley, and that will be like the lowest point in the US. Forget Key West, all those keys will be gone at a 10 foot sea level rise. We'll have like ocean front property basically that has a sunrise and sunset view, right? <laughs> like the like the Everyways National Park does that we visited recently. But what's it gonna do? I mean, it's, it could bring all these waterfront properties that you know, the most valuable properties that everyone wants to live on in the water down to zero and have everyone flocking inland. Do you think that's going to happen? Do you think it's going to happen in your lifetime? Um, it's going to take several decades, but I think we'll see it happen. I don't think people are going to flop. They're going to slowly move, <laughs> slowly watch their properties go into water, rebuild, and put them up higher or something. Yeah, because we see too that the, when they're building houses, like if it's near the beach or on an island, 
they have, have you know, in recent years been building them about a story above ground, but now they're building them higher than one story. I'm seeing the newest properties, the newer ones are higher and higher. And even when you go inland in Florida, they, they're always like, okay, build your house above the road, level of the road, because they usually they'll build the roads at levels that don't flood during rainstorms. But even those houses are getting higher and higher above the road level as they're building them because they realize that, oh, we're putting all this money in this house. They keep revising the flood maps, like you're saying, we make, we get to a point where we can't get flood insurance and you can't just raise your house up. I mean, it's, well, I guess you could, it's gonna be a, that'd be a massive undertaking, especially in, in Florida where most of them are made out of concrete block. A wood frame is one thing, but a concrete block house, I don't know if you could raise that thing up. So anyway, it's, it's gloom and doom, I'd say. I'm not looking forward to it. I think it's gonna happen. I think it's only a matter of time. I think it'll happen sooner than people think it will and it'll be irreversible. It'll be a shock to people. So I say start moving inland now. <laughs> That's what I say. Get out of that those properties on the coast, uh, not only for real estate and residential, but for plants. Plants will all die when water logs their roots. Even if it's fresh water, it'll kill the plant if it's not designed for that. And especially if it's salt water, it'll kill all the plants even before there's standing water on the property because the roots will be waterlogged. Does that make sense? So there's gonna be different layers to the uh, destruction that's gonna happen from this. And I think it's gonna start happening very soon. That's my opinion. What do you think? How many years we got until it's a crisis? Thank you. You think so? I mean, I think we might be at an irreversible spot right now where it's melting so fast. Well, you need to calculate how fast it's melting and how much that, that causes the sea level rise per year, then you can find out how long it will take for it to rise. Right, Maybe but this 10, is all speculation now. It's all speculation. I mean, some people, like you know, we were talking about someone the other day, not say not my lifetime. Oh, I don't think anyone denies that it's going to happen. The question is the timeline. Noah page instead of just fooling around with the calculator. There's, there's certainly some well, scientific don't, estimates. Yeah, but they don't know. That's why they have the 0 to 10 foot um, range, because well, they have no idea. Then take the, the average between one person's calculation and another and come up with your own estimate. Okay. Well, I just could put it at 10. I put it. I just put that tool all the way up to 10 and say, well, if something's in that area where it's going to flood at 10, I don't... I, I would suggest no one buy any property in those areas going forward. The question is, how long will it take for it to reach 10 years? There are calculations and estimates, I guess. Okay. So you don't have to just guess. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I still, my own thought is that we're all still guessing, no matter what. But from a real estate perspective, from my recommendation, I'm going to say do not buy any property that's in those areas that will flood at a 10 foot level sea level rise and use a NOAA tool. Just be that you'll be an informed consumer and you won't be going on emotion how everyone wants to own beachfront property because those are going to be potentially uh, valueless in the near future. Worthless. What do you think about that? Worthless. Yeah. Yep. All right. So make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And we will give you some more informative and controversial videos in the near future. Thanks for watching. Bye.